Paul's writing in the book of Ephesians to Gentiles who thought, oh man, we were not the Jews, so we never had the law of God, so we must be second class people. You know, the Jews got the law of God, they got the Christ coming through them, but it was always promised that through Abraham's seed, that's through Christ, all nations of the earth would be blessed. But they weren't thinking that. And sometimes the Christians weren't helping them any. They weren't thinking that. They were thinking, oh man, we're just second class. God never really cared about us. So God writes these words to them in Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Every Us, Gentiles, every spiritual blessing. We got it in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Just as, listen to what he tells them, these people didn't think they were worthy, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That doesn't mean he selected this guy and that girl and this guy and that girl for salvation no matter what they did. It means that before he ever made the world, he made a plan so that people who sinned, rebelled, so that his servants that he made in his image who rebelled could be brought back to him. He knew it had happened and he made this plan that involved the blood of his son. It's a perfect plan. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. About 23 years ago, my sister had tried and tried with her husband to have a baby and she couldn't have one and she was getting older and the, the maternal time clock was ticking. They went on the hunt for somebody to adopt. They wanted to share love with a baby that they couldn't have. And they finally found my dear niece, Emily, who had a single mother in Florida that wanted to give her child a chance. They got Emily up here, and for 23 years, they loved her and fawned on her and raised her to be a good girl. That's what it means to adopt. It's almost more special. So God has adopted these Gentiles as children to himself. He goes on in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. It's a different lesson, but sin requires blood, sin requires death. Christ was sinless, so He gave His blood for us. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will. Mystery? What's that? Well, 1 Peter 1 tells us how when God was unfolding this plan, He didn't reveal all of it to the prophets, just all at once. But now we get to see all of it. In these last days, it's full. It's complete. We get to look back in history and see, oh yeah, that's what God was doing when He saved Noah and his family. Oh yeah, that's what God was doing when Abraham came along. Oh yeah, God was making the Israelites to have their land so Moses brought them up out of Egypt and give us a parallel to Christ coming up out of Egypt. Oh well, yeah, we get it now. And the mystery was that in the fullness of the dispensation of times, God would gather together in one all things in Christ. In Him, we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. And that's complicated. You can't do all things according to the counsel of your will. You can try to get your way all you want, but you'll find out in life a couple things. One, it's not about you. And two, other people just don't cooperate. <laughs> But he works all things according to the counsel of his will. <clears throat> and then Paul says this, verse 12, in whom we trusted first, and in verse 13, in him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. God gave the Holy Spirit to give us the word and give, guide us through this life. And that's the guarantee that someday we can go and be with the one who made all of this. Can it really be that that God out there who made all of this loves me that much that I can be his child even though I've messed up? Even though I'm one seven billionth of the world's population? Even though I'm just a little pile of dust and ashes that will go back to dust and ashes someday? Yeah, it can be. I'm special and you're special because God chose you before the foundation of the world. But He's not going to force you. 
How could people reject? How could people reject being his child and being in such love? It would be like my niece going to her mom and slapping her. Thank you for giving me a nice home. Thank you for giving me a car when I was 16. Thank you for giving me food every day of my life. And thank you for raising me to be a decent person and have a good education. And thank you for giving me all this. I'm spitting on you. That's what it's like when we don't realize the awe that we ought to have, that we're allowed to be children of God. Would you sing the chorus with me? Can it be that we are the people of the Lord? Can it be that I am a child of 